Bless your people. Open our hearts and minds to our freedom to cast aside the obstacles to joy. May only truth be spoken, may only truth be heard, be asked. Amen. Once upon a time, don't you love stories? You're going to love this one. Once upon a time, a beautiful, independent, self assured maiden sat alone on the shores of an unpolluted pond, contemplating ecological issues. Suddenly, a frog hopped into the maiden's lap. Elegant lady, I was once a prince, but a witch cast a spell on me. One kiss will turn me back. Then we can marry and live in my castle, where you'll cook my meals, clean my clothes, bear my children, and live happily ever after. <laughs> that night, while feasting on frog's legs, <laughs> cooked in a white wine sauce, the maiden chuckled and said, I don't think so. <laughs> The frog anticipated a happy ending and never got it. Because the frog assumed and expected the maiden would feel his way. Assuming others are going to see things your way, expecting others to agree with you, is not a good way to find happiness. More often than not, it generates pain and frustration. The maiden, on the other hand, she knew her own mind, had her own idea about what was best for her, and uh, she didn't feel any need to mold herself to someone else's expectations, and so she enjoyed a great meal and a happy ending. Our scripture reading today is a rewrite of an earlier story told in the Old Testament of Hannah, desperately wanting a child. And when she finds out she's pregnant, she sings a song of joy, which Luke borrows. The twist with Mary is that she wasn't longing to be pregnant, like Hannah, but she gets pregnant anyway. But after some thought, and listening to the angel promise that God was with her, she chooses to respond to what everybody else thinks is a crisis with Hannah's song of prayer. Wow, there's some mental and spiritual discipline for her. She's in danger of being kicked out of her family or stoned. Someone had sex with her before her marriage. Chances are, without her consent, she was probably raped. Quite a beginning for the Messiah, Jesus, and one of the main reasons he was never accepted by the majority of his people. Mary's song of praise doesn't sound jarring to us because we're inured to it and because it was written after the fact, after we'd already found out the baby is Jesus. Hindsight is 2020, isn't it? Except faith can give us that 2020 vision beforehand. Faith enables to recognize that our response to what is bad in life can bring us to the good. The Bible offers our forever and certain songs of praise, hope, and joy in the middle of disasters. I mean, that's the main thing in the Bible. You find a disaster, you're going to find an expression of hope in the middle of it. They make the point that God is always with us in the disasters, and that we can choose to move toward a happy ending no matter what story we find ourselves in. As the good book says, all things will work together for good for those who live in love. Goodness is our destiny, and joy and meaning is our birthright. Now the frog didn't know how good he had it swimming around there in the pond. The, pond, the frog was desperate to be something different. The maiden, on the other hand, wasn't seduced, 
years by the promise of things to come. She was just happy to have a good meal. Happiness is not something we directly work for. Like life itself and our capacity to love, happiness is a gift given to us from God. Happiness is our natural state. It's the natural state of little children to whom the reign of God belongs. Until they're polluted and contaminated by their society, culture, or family to look for happiness and stuff. They get the message they shouldn't take any risks. Life's all about safety. Life's all about everything always being nice all the time. Then they get robbed of the ability to discover happiness amidst the struggle. Now, to acquire happiness, we don't have to do anything except be what we're best equipped for. Invest in relationships with one another, help out in society, and care for nature. We do that, we all know happiness. One of the most sobering and powerful experiences of my wife's life was working, was visiting a work camp in Honduras. All the workers and their families lived together in this terrible, ugly little community. They lived in dilapidated barracks, no privacy, just bunk beds. It was the worst poverty Sue had ever seen. The only source of water was this muddy stream that just made her shudder to look at it. But what shocked her were the children. Not because they were crying and depressed, but because they were joyful, because they were singing. Because they were dancing, playing games they made up. She was stunned. Their happiness was beyond any standard of reference she could imagine. And of course, one of the questions she was left with, why are we so often unhappy? When these children in this situation just claim it daily. It seems that the answer to happiness doesn't come from getting more or doing more, but by letting go of some things. Primarily our expectations. The things other than caring for one another are going to help us and give our lives meaning. Life itself is what is delightful. Life is the gift. It's only hard in our illusions, our ambitions, our fears, our expectations. A friend called me up a few months ago, very stressed. Another company had bought out the paper he was working for, and they were closing that down, and he was going to be out of his job. I let him vent for a while, vent his anxiety, his anger, his worry, his concern. He'd just gotten married, and he felt that the world was falling in on him. And then, a little later, when I felt he could hear me, I recounted the blessings that life had bestowed upon him in the three years that I knew him. It wasn't like this job was his first encounter with pain and chaos. I reminded him of what life looked like when he found out that his first wife was dying of cancer. And then he had to tell his three-year-old son that his mother was dying. And yet in time, life brought into his life another amazing woman whose own husband had died, and she was able to embrace his and his son's love for the first wife, and she became a mother to his son. I said to my friend, you have seen and experienced miracles in your life that at the time you wouldn't have believed possible. And he agreed. I said, all I can say is make room for a miracle this time. We need to give up our expectations about the way life's supposed to unfold and live with the joy of knowing that whatever happens, if we refuse to give up our faith, hope, and love, that life will be good. Instead of worrying with God's grace, let's believe in happy endings. Fear not, the angel says to Mary. Fear not. I don't know how long it took for Mary to claim this salutation by the angel. I would bet she went through her dark night of anxiety and fear and guilt and anger. But at some point, the baby she held in her arms convinced her that whatever anybody was saying about her and the nasty labels they were throwing at her, they weren't going to hold any power over her. She allowed herself to claim the child as a blessing. 
I am blessed among all of you, she says. So how are we doing? How are we doing this Christmas? It's a tough time for some of us. Are we allowing ourselves to enjoy something of the gift of life and the happiness God offers? Or are we stressed out, angry, guilty, worried, and upset? I know what it is to get depressed the closer Christmas comes. It used to take me back to my feelings of aloneness and anger and guilt and loneliness I felt as a child growing up at Christmas. Yes, there were presents and a big meal, but it was all a facade to cover up what wasn't there. Simple caring and love. But God sent me an angel. Angel Eric. A psychiatrist had told me that I didn't need to live in fear and anger. I didn't have to work hard. I could leave the war of crazy emotions. I didn't have to prove myself. And I didn't have to try to get my parents to like me. I just needed to let go of these expectations. Let go that my parents would be the way I wanted them to be. And then he added the good news. He said, Paul, you can have all the love in the world you need. Because you can love. You can create your own family of friends, and despite what you hear, love lines are stronger than blood lines. And someday you can create your own loving family, and you can start by learning to love and care for and cherish that hurt, angry child inside you. And by God, you might. But life's not going to work out the way we expect. But it'll work out wonderful in the ways that matter. Are you expecting your family to act better at Christmas than they do the rest of the year? Get over it. Are you expecting your family to act better at a funeral than they do the rest of the year? Get over it. People die as they live. There's nothing changes or hidden at funerals. People live as they live and die as they live. So stop worrying about how they'll act and choose how you'll act and respond. A dear friend terrorized herself every Christmas and drove her family crazy in the process by putting pressure on herself to cook the perfect meal for her mother-in-law. But her mother-in-law was messed up. And her mother-in-law would always find a little way to criticize her. You know, just like shoving a shit in Every Christmas, same old story. This crippling routine became a source of great pain and depression until the daughter-in-law freed herself from the expectation that she was supposed to get her mother-in-law's approval. So, she told her husband, Hey, honey, not cooking any meals for your mother anymore. Let's take her out to a nice restaurant. But she's not coming again. And you know what? Her family was so thankful. She stopped becoming a crazy woman at Christmas. <laughs> I remember I was stressed out my wife about some years ago trying to get out our Christmas cards in the letter list. You'd think it was as important as open heart surgery. And I suggested that along with going to school full time and working part time, that maybe we didn't need to do the list that year. She finally agreed to let go of this expectation, and the happiness started to return. Last month, I was talking to another friend of mine who's off work because of an injury. He's stressed out. He doesn't have much money to buy presents for his son. He was talking about all the toys that the other kids were giving and how disappointed his son might be. I said this, do you lie and break your promises to your son? No. Do you ignore him or abuse him? No. Of course not. I said, well, don't say of course not because some parents do. I said, do you love your son and make the effort to teach him to be polite and kind? Yes. Do you sacrifice for him and do your best by him? Yes. Do you spend time playing with him? Yes. I said, what do you think your child really needs the most? To live a good and meaningful life. A big bunch of toys this Christmas? Or the knowledge years from now that you and your wife always loved him and always did your best for him? Let go of the expectations. If you feel the joy, you'll feel the joy. Choose a happy ending and your child will be happier for it. Even if he learns that sometimes you can't get everything you want. Not a bad lesson to learn, too. A great Chinese sage once said, 
When the archer shoots for no particular prize, he has all his skills. But when he shoots to win a bronze buckle, he's nervous. And when he shoots for a gold prize, he goes blind, sees two targets, and is out of his mind. The skill level hasn't changed, but the prize and the anxiety divides him and drains him of his power. Let's drive him here. Can you let go of it? Is there something you're investing your hopes and dreams in that as you stress out? Partner with God. Listen to the angels God sends our way that says, fear not. The angels who remind us that life and love are all the blessings we need to experience the joy of gratitude. It just takes letting go of what we cannot control and letting God bless us with the rest. Let us, like Mary, dare to say in the nighttime of our lives, My soul rejoices in God my Savior, for God has done great things.